I've got another PowerPoint here tied into energy flow in ecosystems. And it's really just some key concepts and key terms that you need to know tied again to um, the capturing of energy um, by plants or producers. So primary productivity. So primary, think first. Productivity, think producers. I think P, producers, generally photosynthesis. They're able to capture energy and store it. So productivity is all about capturing energy and storing it. Primary means it's the, usually the plant or the producers started the food chain. They're the first to capture energy and store it. So just some key terms you need to know. So we'll do a quick run through here. So the definition of primary productivity. It's the rate at which producers capture and store energy generally through photosynthesis. So I, like I, said, I think P, primary, first, productivity, producers, photosynthesis. So it's the rate at which, like in a given year per meter squared, I looked at all the plants in that area, or all the producers, I should say, in that meter square, if I could measure how much energy they have captured and stored, generally they capture it through photosynthesis, store it in glucose, and then in starch. If I could measure that energy per meter squared per year, that would be the primary productivity. That's usually measured, or I guess always, in kilocalories. So I put the um, equation for photosynthesis here. Sorry. What well, is anything you need to commit completely to memory? Most of you already know it anyway, right? Plants take in carbon dioxide and water. They're able to pull in energy from the sun that empowers photosynthesis, and they store that energy from the sun ends up being stored as potential energy in glucose. So C6, H12O6 is glucose. And then there's a release of some oxygen. So the rate at which they're doing photosynthesis and then storing that energy in glucose, which we can measure the energy stored in glucose, that's primary productivity. Just a basic picture here to remind you of photosynthesis. And we've used the term biomass before, and it can get like a little tricky, I guess, because they're really a similar or related, related terms here. So let's see, primary productivity versus biomass. So producers, plants, let's say, not always, but generally, let's say plants, they capture energy through photosynthesis and they store it in glucose and starch molecules and cellulose that builds their tissue. So they capture energy, do photosynthesis and that energy gets stored in carbohydrates. If you measure in a meter square over the course of a year, how much energy they store, let's say in glucose and in their starch molecules, if you measured that energy in kilocalories, that's the primary productivity. But let's say instead, I pulled up all the, the plants and the producers in a meter squared. I took it to the lab and I dried it out. I got rid of all the water. So all that's left are the starch molecules, are the glucose molecules, and I put it on a scale. That would be biomass. It's the mass of the, the molecules that make up the living thing, and we measured in grams. I guess the connection is that the energy that you're measuring when you say it's primary productivity, you measure in calories, that energy is stored in those molecules, those molecules that you could put on a scale and mass. So there's a relationship there, but just to keep it straight, you see calories, that's a measure of the energy stored. When you see grams, that's the mass of the molecules that are actually like physically, I guess, storing that energy. I don't know if it's physically, but go. So there's a connection there. Um, so what do producers do with the glucose? Right? So they capture energy. They store it in glucose. What are they going to do with that? They use it, right? Um, they store it in glucose. And then let's say a plant needs to produce flowers or maybe something in the cell needs to happen. Well, bust apart that glucose is it, uh, through something called cellular respiration. It's um, able then to use that, that energy to do some work. And the process, some of it is lost as heat. It is lost as heat. And that's important because the primary consumers and secondary consumers can't eat heat. So that energy in a sense is lost to the food chain. It's not lost completely. It's not destroyed, right? It's lost. They 
also store it. They use some of the energy they capture, they store it in glucose, and then that glucose can hook together in chains of glucose to make cellulose, to make starch. Um, it builds their tissue, and then it's also available for future use. This is what the herbivores can obtain. The herbivores eat the plants, that's what they're getting. They get that glucose, they get that starch, and then they can bust that apart to get energy out. So I put this as cellular respiration, whether it's plants or consumers, if they eat plant matter that has glucose or maybe starch is just big chains of glucose. They get some glucose, they take in some oxygen if it's um, aerobic respiration, they take in oxygen and they give off carbon dioxide, water, and in the process, they freed up the energy to use. So plants do both. They do photosynthesis and cellular respiration, right? They capture energy from the sun, they store it as glucose, so maybe they uh, build starch or cellulose out of it, maybe they store some of it for future use. Time comes along where they need that energy, they need it to, for the cells to do work, and they need it maybe to make a flower, whatever they're gonna do, to pull in water. They actually have to bust apart that glucose to get the energy to do work, and that's cellular respiration. So plants do both, I thought that was important to say. So these are just two key terms, may or may not pop up on the AP test, never know. Gross primary productivity. So gross, it's the total energy that the plants um, or the producers capture and store in glucose. It's the total amount. But plants do use some of that energy that they capture. So what's left over after you subtract what the plants used for themselves is called net. And I was thinking of it if um, you work, maybe you work 10 hours and you get $15 an hour. So 10 times 15 is 150. When you get your paycheck, it's actually not for $150, right? They subtract um, taxes, they subtract other things out of your check. So you might only be left with $120. That's your net pay. So it's after they subtract what's been used by the government, I guess. So I guess you can kind of think of it like that. So primary productivity on its own is primary productivity. Ooh. <laughs> the amount of energy captured by producers and stored in their, their molecules over the course of a year in a meter square. Gross is the total amount of energy they capture net would be minus what they've used for themselves. You might think, who cares? Why is this a big deal? And I would say because net is what's then available to the herbivores, to the primary consumers. That's what's available to the food chain. So that's why we make a, um, say that's important. I don't know if this picture helped, but I thought it was nice, right? What they produce during photosynthesis is the gross, right? They've used some for themselves. So this is no longer stored in the plant because they have used it and a bunch of it was lost as heat. The net is then what's left over and still stored in their tissues. That's what's available to the next group or the primary consumers, I should say. Again, same idea, right? You have the gross, so they capture 300 joules is another measurement of energy, but it could be kilocalories capture that much um, energy, they use some of it, maybe they use um, some of it for growth or their cells to do work. And when you convert the uh, potential energy stored in glucose to the kinetic energy to make, this, make your cells do what they gotta do, some is lost as heat, so they lose some as heat. It's only a certain amount or a fraction of what's been captured is actually stored in the plants. So they captured 300 joules, they lost 100 joules as heat, so they're only left with 200 joules stored in their glucose and their starch. That's what's available to the caterpillar. All right, there is a great video lab. I linked it in the um, unit one playlist. It's by Christy, um, I guess I would say Schertz, I hope I'm saying it right. Um, you can search YouTube for it, but I linked it again in the playlist. So 
watch it. She does a lab about this productivity. We watched it in class. She does a great job. So it's um, in the unit one playlist. So check that out. You could also check out Bozeman, um, AP Environmental Science Bozeman. It's video eight. I linked it in the unit one playlist as well as the Khan Academy has some great stuff. So I linked, I believe I linked that as well. I'll double check if I didn't, but I'm pretty sure I linked that too. Some really great references. The last, I think, key term I had here was ecological efficiency. So we said that when um, plants producers, they capture over the course of a year, a certain amount of energy, they capture it, they store it in their tissue, right? But they use some of that energy. And when you convert the potential energy that they captured and stored in the glucose, when they bust that glucose apart and cellular respiration to get that energy out to use it, they convert it to kinetic energy eventually. And when you convert energy from one form to another, some becomes heat. Heat is not good. You can't eat it, it can't power photosynthesis. So it's kind of low quality or wa a waste. So that's where this word efficiency comes in. How efficient um, are these systems at holding on to energy? There you go. So here, pictures. Um, but here's this example. It says, uh, to determine the amount of energy left for the caterpillar to use, you subtract the amounts converted to heat and excrete, right? Because when you poop, there's some molecules with waste. You poop those out. You subtract those from the total amount um, consumed. So if a caterpillar takes in a thousand joules or calories of energy by eating a plant, okay, and they lose 500 joules as heat when they convert the energy stored in the plant to energy to run around and do caterpillar kind of things, they run. They convert it from kinetic to potential, so they lose 500 joules as heat. And then let's say they poop out some molecules that still contain energy. They lose another 320 joules. What's actually stored in the caterpillar is 180 joules. So scientists use this term efficiency. How efficient is that? So it says 180 joules of energy is used to create organic molecules such as fats and proteins that store this energy in the caterpillar. If we mass those on a scale, that will be biomass. If we figured out the uh, calories stored in that um, 180 joules, I guess we'll say, um, that would be the productivity of the caterpillar. So here's an example. So ecological efficiency is usually shown as a percent. Um, on the AP test, we always assume 10% ecological efficiency when it goes from um, producers to primary consumer, primary consumer to secondary, secondary to tertiary. We always assume that 10% is stored in each successive trophic level. I thought maybe this example would help. So here's kind of a recap. It's the percentage of usable energy transferred one, from one trophic level to another. Um, it accounts for the second law of thermodynamics, right? And the energy I put lost in little quotes there. It's not lost to the, um, the world. It's lost to the food chain. So that's the energy that's lost for the food chain, right? And we always just assume about 10% for the AP test. And that's why usually a pyramid works, right? All right, I think that's it. Hopefully this was just a recap of things we've already discussed. So I maybe beat you over the head with this energy stuff, but it's a good thing. Have a good day.